Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, thanks for coming to Facebook Live. How are you doing? I just want to check in, see how you're holding up in uh, COVID time. Pand the pandemic rages on. So we're still in this pandemic y world with, um, with some rules and some masks and some distancing and uh, some increased cases. Um, I, I want to check in with you. So many people, I think, are um, feeling a lot of the challenges of this time. In the ER, I see the extreme examples. I see, literally, I see people with nervous breakdowns and suicide. I've had a fair number of patients that are anxious and suicidal and, and um, it's intense. It's an intense sign. So I just want to check in with you and see how you're doing and make sure you're taking care of yourself. Basic taking care of yourself and prioritizing your health and your sanity and your mental health and your well-being and how you're feeling and all of that stuff. And I have a couple suggestions for you that some people, politicians, may not like the news media. One, here's suggestion number one. Check in with yourself every day. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Jack Clark! What do you mean love the hair? What's wrong with the hair? It's a little bed heady. Look, I haven't had a haircut in about a year. I don't know when the last time you had a haircut was, Jack Clark. Check in with yourself every day and see how you're feeling, especially with regarding to, like, anxiety how wound up are you how like it's it's an election season right it's political time um and this is the thing this is kind of the controversial but i don't think it should be controversial thing is if you're getting too bent out of shape with all of the politics and all of the news and all of the i'm gonna talk about corona coronavirus that's another one and fires and all you know this just like chicken little screaming with its head off stuff turn off the news turn it off for your own sanity check in with yourself how you're doing what do you need i know we want to be a part of politics and voting it's good to vote do your part and then take a break <laughs> and then take care of yourself and i think for a lot of people for so many people it means turning it off Stop checking, disconnecting from media, from the political stories, from the news, from the, from the scare you, stimulate you, news and phones and all of, how about a shower? The pits look bad. The, the pits? What? What are you talking about? The pits? I'm going to block you, Jack Clark. Um, but it's just checking in with yourself, seeing how you're doing and what you need. And one of them is, don't be afraid to cut out the news and the media and all the stuff that make it, it and it I'll be honest I gotta take breaks from this stuff like I'm a part of this thing like I go on the news sometimes and I'm like I just can't take it I can't take all of the hysteria and the intense emotion and you know there's just so much going on right now so many stressors you gotta do you need to take care of you and and really be aggressive about that and don't be apologetic. You can explain to people. Some people need to get cut out of your life. Not just like news media, or whatever, but like people that make you nuts and you like, like, I've seen a handful of folks who are stressed out because of work. They don't have jobs. Just the general environment is increasing anxiety and the uncertainty and all of that. And so knowing that this is in the thing, this is in the time that we are, it's like proactively doing something about your health and taking care of yourselves. All right, that's the doctor piece. Now the rest of you jokers. Aunt Kathy, so far so good. Got a, got a new purple bed a week ago, sleeping much better. Okay, tell me about that, Kath. What kind of bed do you like soft? Does it make a big difference? Here's a couple bed questions for everybody. Number one, have you tried any of the... So number one is like, for me, temperature is huge. If it's cold, I can fall asleep. If it's hot, I can't. There's this thing called a chili pad where it lines your bed and you can control the temperature and you make it cold. Some people swear by that. Two, 
I've tried this. Is this weighted blanket? Have you guys tried this? Does that help your sleep? I'm curious if you've tried those things. Let's talk about sleep for a minute. What kind of things make your sleep worse? Caffeine. Your phone, keeping your phone right in front of your face. I think a lot of people ruminate. They just let thoughts keep going and go. They don't have a way to get them out and let them go at the end of the day. It's almost like I like that prayer at the end of the night that's like, I don't remember how it goes, but it's just something like trusting God's going to take care of everything. You can go to sleep and let it go. Um, and then um, sleep hygiene stuff. So how is your sleep? How is your sleep? What helps you to sleep better? What are your challenges? That's the question. Jack Clark, this is not social time. We'll write your name on the board. The brand is purple. It's self-cooling. Oh, so you got one of those cooling ones. Haven't woke up in a sweat all week. Yes, I do have a weighted blanket. Why can't it warm me up? So is the cooling part of that bed, is that why you like that bed? You also said it was soft. The sleep thing is, um, I, I feel like when I was 20, I didn't care about sleep. It didn't matter. I'm 41 now. And I'm like, oh. like when you were younger, you would, you'll talk about, oh man, like I went out and I had this party, man. It was so much fun and whatever. And like the next day, like you bounce back, you're fine. It doesn't matter. Now when you're older, I'm not even that old. Now when you're older and somebody asks you, hey, what'd you do last night? And you're like, I went to bed early. <sighs> It's incredible. I feel so good today. You know, like how many people can identify with that? It's like, oh yeah. And then like other old people will look back at you and be like, yeah, man. Oh, that's the best. It's like, that's pathetic, but that's how I feel. So, so Kathy, for you is the, what, what for you is the biggest factor in helping you sleep better? Is cooling number one. Is the softness of the bed, is that, does the weighted blanket help you at all? What is your experience? What is your experience? Um, I would say from my perspective in the ER, the big picture basic behavior and value is taking care of yourself, prioritizing all of this stuff. What you eat, how you move, sleep, that kind of self-care. Um, putting a space in your life to enjoy it. Um, and then also taking care of all of these health things like your blood pressure and like your mammograms and all that stuff that... It doesn't matter today, but in the it does prevent things that none of us want. Breast cancer spreading. Hi, Katie. Josh Lentz is here. Josh, thanks for coming. I remember the days when you taught me the ropes at Amigos in the back. God, in at Metcalf South Mall, they bulldozed that mall. I started working there when I was 14. Josh was such a stud. You could flip those tacos and nachos out like nobody's business. Katie and Josh were talking about sleep. We're talking about sleep and things that, like, how's your sleep? Is it any good? What do you do? What helps you? Aunt Kathy got a cool mattress. Yes, softness. Old Tempur-Pedic. The cat poured water on had turned into a rock. Well, that's not good. Coolness, very important. Initially got the weighted blanket when my dog died, so to feel like she was there. Oh, that's hard. One of my buddies, yes, I have already gotten my flu shot. Good for you. One of my buddies recently lost his dog of 10 years, and it's a death in the family, you know? It really is. Animals are incredible. I got to figure something out so that I can have a dog. I mean, there's a reason. Dogs and humans for... When was the dog domesticated? It's tens of thousands of years ago, but I, maybe a hundred, I don't even know how long ago, but been domesticated and genetically, 
you know, the dogs that were more attentive and in tuned and part of the team and all, you know, part of the tribe and all of that, those dogs were bred and selected. And now we come into having this wonderful companion animal. Uh, and it's really hard when they die. This, this thing about life, God, I think about this a lot. There's a lot of mysteries of life. What are we doing here? What's this stuff all about? That's right, I'm going there. And death is one of them. Death and loss is just one of them that I just can't get wrap my head around, you know? We've, human beings, homo sapiens have been living on this planet tens of thousands, hundred thousand years. Generations have come and gone. Our t we have our time and then our time is done. It's just an in incredible reality that we don't live forever and that sometimes we a lot of times we survive so many people in our lives that um uh, people and animals and relationships and and um that they don't and there's a mystery to that why is that like that why is this set up like that um loss is such a huge thing mm Um, I already got my flu shot also. Got to have one being in the hospital. I'm hopeful that with all the masks and social distancing that the flu won't be so bad this year, but I still get the flu shot and would recommend getting it. It's one less disease you have to worry about. COVID's going around. Why do we want to even, even, why would we even want to allow COVID to, why would we even want to allow another disease to cause problems so that's why i would say get get your flu shot but admittedly hopefully this one won't be as bad of a year and sometimes some of the data from other countries that have kind of gone before us have shown that that all of the covid stuff we're doing has um will limit the flu although we'll see hi nishat we're on Earth for such a limited time. We should use it to make the experience better for others. Yeah, there's purpose to that. It, it is the blink of an eye. You know, thinking back, what were you doing a decade ago? What were we doing a decade ago? It's really easy to get that sense of how short it is. When I turned 39, which was two long years ago, almost three long years ago, I started to have the midlife crisis of thinking, God, my life, statistically is half over. You never know. You may die earlier, you may live longer. Could live to 90, could die at 43. Shit, could die at 41. Um, and that kind of brought, issued in this fundamental change in me where I started to value time a lot more than I did before. When you're young, you're a billionaire with time. And slowly you get, you get, you spend it. You get more and more poor. There's no way to reverse that. There's no way. Take care of yourself and live healthy and prevent all of the whatevers so you don't you don't artificially unnecessarily shorten your time, of course, but I think having purpose and doing stuff, you know, contributing to others in meaningful ways. Super important. Um, Nishant, we were talking about sleep. How is your sleep? What are the challenges for your sleep? What things help you to sleep better you guys want to see the sunset here you go i'm going to show you the sunset Whee! it's coming Woo! lucky out here in california it's not too cold just yet i've been working some night shifts so jack clark that's why my hair is as nice as it is right now um yeah i i started i don't know if uh, anxiety is so common uh do you find that your anxiety is worse now and why is it worse is it because of covid or election stuff or job stress i know you're a teacher you know with the kids and um curious why why you're feeling more anxious now. I certainly see people in the ER that show the extremes of that panic attacks. 
suicidal mental nervous breakdowns that's not really a medical diagnosis but people come in freaking out you know not just not sure what to do panic I think I guess it would be a form of a panic attack would be the label we call it but in the shot what I was saying earlier was checking in about people about their anxiety and and prioritizing your own mental health and number one is identifying what things raise your anxiety level practical things what do you do during the day what kind of information do you let in i.e news media politics what kind of stuff gets your blood boiling and you know you know what kinds of things can you remove to um can you ow wow someone's biting me um what kind of things are things you can do something about to lower your anxiety and then identifying those and getting aggressive about it you know i know you're politically minded and, and going to vote and do your part and everything. Great. Do that. And then, and then don't let it take you down. Don't let it wind you up too much. Um, this is a very heated political season and I would encourage everyone on both sides to take care of yourself and take, including mental health, taking some distance, shutting it down, taking, allowing space from that to not get you so worked up. I took myself to a socially distant outdoor comedy event Saturday night, which, which is nice. That sounds good. We're such social creatures and being pandemically quarantined and distant is not in our natures, even though this is what you know we need to do now for this damned virus. Um, what can, what do we do? What can you do to compensate for that that's been taken away and I think that's an important question for a lot of us so anyway the point was to be aggressive about recognizing it, and this is I'll say something along that line about your comedy thing is um, I, when I was younger I, I think I was much more I didn't value uh, entertainment and comedy in the arts and I was just like so um you know, so focused on saving lives and medicine and this kind of hard, I don't know, more intense, whatever. As I've gotten older and now seeing all, just appreciating the value of just enjoying life, but then also how we need coping mechanisms and stress relievers. I've come to, um, I've come to appreciate more and more the need for comedy and uh, I, I've said more than once that it's the comedians that will save us in the pandemic and COVID who keep us sane. I think there's a very important place for entertainment and just to enjoy life, but also to get through it. There's a reason evolutionarily that we laugh and that we, and that we, uh, tell jokes and there's even space for that it's to, it lightens the mood and, you know releases chemicals that make us feel better and live better and, and uh I've, so i've come to value more and more the place and role of entertainment and just not only enjoying life but getting through tough times like this the comedians will save us that's the I also listened to your self-care podcast, which was amazing. We'll message you about the specifics. Yeah, I did a, I just did a, a thing because I have so many people, patients come in and like, these are the things that I say to patients, which is really just getting them to, to spend more time taking care of themselves and prioritizing their own health. It's important. It's important to feel better and all those things. Um, and so that's available on the podcast. So there should be a link on the Facebook somewhere. If not, you can Google Larry Bruchette podcast. It's called the COVID journal. And sometimes I talk about COVID. Sometimes I just directly kind of talk to you about how to best get through this time and, um, and take care of yourself in the same way that I, I take talk when, you know, with patients right in front of me one day at a time, we are getting through this thing. Think about, we have gotten through this, you know, like everybody, gets anxious thinking about the future, being so future oriented. How long is this going to last? The uncertainty causes anxiety, thinking about how hard it is right now to not, to go without certain things. And when we look to the future, it often 
makes our present worse. Conversely, I think for this one, if we look backwards and we say, gosh, look what we've gotten through, it kind of makes me feel a little better. If you just take it day to day, can I get through today? This is what I have to do. This is the reality of the environment. That's much more manageable. It's like thinking like, oh my God, am I going to have to do this for 18 more months? I can't. That's overwhelming. I can't even comprehend all the things I'm not going to be able to do and the shit I'm going to have to deal with. Don't do that. <laughs> Why are we doing that? You know, like that kind of outlook is going to, you could see how that thought running through your head affects, affects you and makes you feel worse one day at a time, you know, sufficient for the day is its own evil. Isn't that the quote? I think it's a good one. Kathy, for my mental health, I'm still drumming. I like that a lot. Both on Zoom with a friend in Santa Monica and others across the country in person here in KC, masks, socially distant, still doing community art. Yeah, those are both great outlets. How do you feel when you're doing that stuff, right? Over the weekend, I worked with a group of Girl Scouts making boat signs, danced with Casey Wolf, new mural project. Yeah, so you're staying active. You're staying active in social art and drumming. Great ways to express, especially with your physical body, the drumming, that physical nature. It just makes you feel better, you know? Watched late night. So what's the deal? Is KU going to have basketball? Is it going to be like they are going to play but just no fans? Is that how it's going to be? And, of course, doing my best to take care of Graham. Yeah, thank you for that. Poor all the folks, especially older in, in nursing homes and who are isolated. It's huge. I appreciate your clarity. Day-to-day -day is hard for teachers because we long-term plan and have to get materials and supplies out to students. I hear you. So what do you think, Nishant? What, what is the most helpful mindset for you day to day to run through your mind and to focus on to stay sane and not crazy and, not, and minimize anxiety and feeling overwhelmed and not, look, not live in the future, but live today, right? The power of now. I think there's a lot of benefit to that 1500 fans into the games at allen field house what is that 10 percent? i don't know how, how many they pack in there god i don't indoor arena i, I don't know about the safety of that and uh, how all of that works but um Okay. Sounds like fun. As long as it's safe. I have no idea about the circulation of air and how far apart they... Outdoor stadium staying apart, that makes sense to me. Indoor arena, more concerning. 16,300, so about 10%. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> listen to music find com find comedy dance in my room where no one else can see me yeah right no kidding i don't want anybody else have you seen those things of trump dancing they're so bad so bad <laughs> it's like there's some comedy for you that combines that and dancing, those Trump, that Trump dancing wheel. So bad. I'm like, bro, just. <laughs> okay, good. I'm going to run. I'm going to sneak over to Instagram and do one of these for a couple minutes. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're both doing well and getting through this. We're going to be okay. It's good to chat for a second. But anyway... Um, I'll post this thing and, um, keep your eye. Th so this week, here's what we got coming out this week. We did a, so the next, uh, COVID video we did, it's a good one. And it's on, um, did, was the virus manufactured in a lab in China? The conspiracy theory is Wuhan, China has this Institute of virology, like right down the street from where the virus started. And they're like, well, China made that thing in a lab. They released it on purpose. It's biological warfare. And if you look at the science, this is the punchline, but I go into like 
20 minutes of explanation, which is really interesting in the, the genetic analysis. You look at the science, and um, because of the way the, the, the genes have evolved in coronavirus, it's pretty clear that this thing was not manufactured in a lab. Now, could it have been the case that they found it in a bat in nature, isolated it in the lab, and then released it? Yeah, that's possible. Intentionally, unintentionally, you know, they have stated, Dr. Xi has said, no, it was never in the lab before the pandemic. Apparently, lab people there, never, nobody got it. Nobody was ever sick and documented as sick. So do I trust China? Absolutely not. But it does appear that it's not manufactured. Couldn't have made these genetic changes in a lab. Go into it. So check that out. That'll be out like in the next day or two. Um, and, um, yeah, that'll be on, um, YouTube and the podcast. You guys have a good Monday. It was nice chatting.